Hey guys, welcome to Snowbreak Containment Zone. As you can see, I already have Katya. I spent around, let's say, around two hours just, you know, um, tinkering with her kit, running some scenarios with her before I give you guys my honest opinion if I'm going to recommend you guys pulling for her. I hope I'm not too late. Maybe you're still thinking about pulling for her. But let's go first to her kit and uh, give you guys a bit of a rundown on what she has. Okay, so my stats are actually for now maxed out based on how I built her and up to what extent. I'll do a separate build guide on how I came here, but we're going to be discussing more on the overview first on how is she going to impact your team? How are you going to be using her? Let's start off with her skills. So for her skills, this is related to her standard skill. So she comes into a different a form, which is called um, Guidance 3 form. So uh, this form basically is she can do a burst damage through the enemy, um, but there's a energy bar to this one. So Katya used standard, standard skill to switch to Guidance 3 form. In this form, Katya cannot move. Um, she's kind of... She, she, she isn't squishy in that pose, but she'll take on damage depending on how much it goes your way. I would still suggest that you dodge and just activate um, this skill again, her standard skill, and just shoot again. <clears throat> but more or less, she is going to be kind of, uh, what do you call this, kind of semi-shielded. So let's move forward. So cannot move. Tactical dodges will make her exit this form. So if you exit, uh, if you dodge, you exit, then you just do the standard skill again. Okay, cannot restore S energy. And each shot additionally consumes 0 0.5 energy, which is going to be quick. But as you shoot in your regular shooting form, you also gain this S energy back. Okay, so... If you run out of energy, you're going to exit the form as well. So Katja isn't affected by changes to rate of fire, except when that happens to be in her manifestation, which we'll discuss later. So, and she gains increase in anti-interruption ability. This is what I'm talking about. Um, she cannot be interrupted. However, during this mode, her shots are have decreased final damage, destructible object damage, and you energy gain. So the trade-off for her kit is... You get unlimited ammo, but your damage is around halved. It's half. Okay? So, that is why you have to build her attack stat high so that um, you'll have... it. It's still going to be 50% less or probably 48%. But, again, at least it is growing and you have consistent shooting and you don't have to reload anyway. So, and also the energy gain is going to be decreased as well during in this form. Okay, in Guidance 3 form, Katya rate of fire varies based on the crossbow mode. So, there are two crossbow modes. One is a singular shot, and the other one is a wide shot, which has um, which has five arrow shooting at it. But obviously, it's going to be a slower shot. So, as you can see here. Um, they, this is a there, there's a difference between the shots. I would highly encourage you to use a single shot because I think that is what she is made for. The spread shot is actually for me not not as effective, even though it's spread. Um, and the aim is is way off. If you miss on the other bullets, if you aim on the middle and you miss on the other four, then definitely it won't be that effective. So. Stick to the single shot, I, I would suggest that. So final damage decreases to 48% of original value, value as I've said. And uh, the uh, damage to destructible objects decreases to 50%. These are um, areas where in armor falls off. We can, you know, we can take off that armor. And new energy decreases to 25% of the original value. Okay, so tactical dodge immediately, immediately resets death traverse cooldown which is nice uh, when equipped with a frost weapon not in guidance 3 
shots, hits, restores two energy. This is what I'm talking about. Once she exits and you just uh, shoot the enemy with your regular shot, then you gain S energy as well with this skill that we opened already. So moving on to her support skill. So basically her support skill is just a frost damage inflicting frozen to targets within range for three seconds. It's a short duration, but it's a fantastic support skill to have especially if you're running her as a support so that is it nothing special so uh, this is these are just buffs so basically this is just frost damage which gives you frozen for three seconds for your support skill and last is going to be your um ultimate so by the way the standard skill is, is death traverser Explosive Envoy is going to be your support skill and your Eloquent Arrows is going to be your ultimate. Okay, so you have the option of step, uh, putting it on stay in, which in she does her ultimate, then she stays in the battle. And this one is operative, switches out to battle after a quick ultimate. Um, depends on you guys, depends on preference, but for me, I'd rather have it on stay in. So Katya shoots towards the sky. This is actually a nice ultimate to have. This has a long duration of 10 seconds. Um, targets a center target, uh, wherever the target goes, that AOE fouls the target and also damages the other you know, enemies near that target as well. So this one, Damage instance cooldown of, of Guileful Barrage decreases to 0.2 seconds and AoE increase by 50%. So the second one is also decreases uh, movement speed, which is nice as well for, for additional control. And upon hitting 10 times, additional inflicts frozen effect for another 3 seconds. Okay, so these are her skills and... For her um, alignment index or Deus alignment, so each of Catch's shots has a 30% chance to gain an aptitude effect. Shot deals 30% of attack as frost damage. So additional frost damage aside from the regular damage for ballistic increases by an additional 7% for each of the alignment index. So I have now 400, so that's roughly 748, so 58 in total percent of frost damage. Um, this will help you increase your damage output if you work on your alignment index. So that is how her kit at first glance looks like. We'll do a demo in a while, um, and I'll give you guys my thoughts on what um what her role will be in your team considering that you have enough characters i presume but that one was a nice shot <laughs> okay so logistics these are the logistics that came with the shop this is actually obviously for her so this one increases attack by 20 percent if you have two for three officers when equipping operative shot hits but does not crit because your crossbow doesn't crit so gains like Cyclonic Fissure, increased frost damage by 3 for 3 seconds, max 20 stacks. So that's 20 times 3%. That's roughly an additional, what, 60%? Each crit, crit hit mo removes one stack, dodging refreshes the effect duration. So don't worry about the removal because you don't crit anyway. So this will give you... A, a consistent 60%, but again, it's only for 3 seconds, but again, it it counts again after the 3 seconds, obviously. So, this is going to be part of her kit anyway. So, it's going to be a standard in her kit. We'll discuss more of it as we go to her build guide. For her manifestation, guys, um, she's going to be she's gonna be good she's gonna require actually one copy for m1 this one is to increase her rate of fire okay in guidance form so this is very important we'll talk about the rest but again um just take care of the first copy then probably um probably mine the rest or farm the rest then you're good so for neuronics uh, we'll talk about more on the build guide. I just want to 
focus more on why should you pull for her? If you have that many already, why should should you pull for her? Number one, her DPS for for what do you call this? For even for this weapon. Even for this weapon, this is going to be the weapon available in the shop. This is actually a nice weapon because her ballistic damage scales up and stacks and increases in damage as you deal damage to a specific enemy. So um, it scales up and it scales up crazy. So this one, the, the weapon itself is going to be easy to get. It's going to be available in the shop and this is going to be good for her already. You don't really need to splurge for the unique weapon that she has but if you have that then you could go after that but this weapon especially if you have this at tier 5 this is going to be a very very good weapon so again um why should you pull for her number one she is going to be a dps not a dps queen per se but she's gonna be beneficial for targets for bosses and if you could make that boss stationary, you could really bombard with consistent damage, especially if you time everything, the immobilization, the control, plus you can time the standard skill for this girl and you just shoot away. And again, that meter just continues to drop because you don't have to reload, take note. All in all, even though that she has medium damage, but with the consistent damage and if you could um, control the enemy in not moving then you will be maximizing her so all you need to do guys is to increase her attack stat frost damage s energy recovery alignment index of course um, those are things that you need to improve with her um, again the unique weapon is actually good but it's not a must She's going to be running for you even with the uh, the weapon at the store. Again, if you don't have a single target DPSer, then she's the girl for you. If you have all the characters and you have a priority, then if you still want to get her, she really plays differently. She's You're going to get used to playing her because you don't have to reload and don't click on R because... If you click on R, it switches to the five arrow mode or cross crossbow arrow mode. Then it's gonna be you know you, you're gonna be, do be doing less damage, especially if it's only gonna be single target. Then you have to switch again. So again, her her play is going to be a lot of movement towards the battlefield. So single target burst damage is going to be her best role. If you already have a sniper and you prefer a sniper, then it, it's really up to you. But for me, I re usually prefer burst. Like, for example, life. For example, I have Abscunditus and now her. Then, definitely, I will be preferring her over a sniper because I prefer to use burst damage to gun down my enemies. Okay? So, ideally, you, you pair her with somebody who can support you with control. Stun, freeze... Uh, somebody who can incapacitate the enemy and you can pour on all the bullets, then that would be good. Um, life, um, what do you call this? Life 5 star is actually perfect for her because she does freeze as well. Um, also, if you can do the standard skill for Frisia, then switch to Katya, then it would also be good. What else? Who else does a lot of control? But anyway, for those for for her to be good at a primary DPS role, you will need to have a good support that can uh, hold enemies, or that can freeze enemies, or that can you know incapacitate them and not being able to move. Let's do a demo for this one. Your connection. Let's do just me as a single uh what they call this single participant so she's gonna be a, you're gonna have a series of plays for her so standard skill dodge standard skill so again make sure that your standard skill uh if you can hasten that bar then it'll be good 
so so let's try this one so as you can see the shot varies in damage 3000 2000 4000 so let's do that's that's for your basic shot so if you do your standard skill it would be smaller but again the damage is going to be quicker because of the speed once you have decreased in what do you call this decreased in your energy for your standard skill try to go back to your standard shot because it will recharge your standard skill quickly okay so it's gonna take you a while to use her or to be you know to be to be uh what do you call this to be proficient in using her so as you can see it's really quick how to lower down their what do you call this their hp so just gonna be doing basic shot the basic shots are not bad I'm shooting between 2,000 something to 5,000. So if you see that. Okay. So she's like carrying a machine gun, guys. But it's more accurate than your machine gun, of course. So let us uh, reduce damage taken. Okay, let's just uh, go through the motions here. So again, standard skill is... Oh, as you can see, I forgot. I reloaded and... Okay, going back to the... Re, to the, the This one has a little bit of a smaller damage. But again, it's really hard to, hard to control the other projectiles. Especially if your enemies are not really in, you know aligned with your let's do an ultimate here just to clear things out so as you can see the the projectiles actually are dipping down but you can still reach that far it's just ha just have to you know just have to adjust because your crossbow ammo is are not bullets so it it dips down the farther they go just have to get used to actually shooting them but the range is actually the range is actually respectable just have to adjust 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 uh what they call this and tilt your crossbow up oops see just dodge and ow Not bad damage, right? So basic attack would be around 2,000 to 5,000. Then for your standard skill. For your standard skill, it's going to be halved. Depending on what you dish out. So if they're, you know, bunching up. Let's power up that standard skill first before we actually Oh, forgot. As you can see there I reloaded and uh, loaded a different type of bullet. So we do need some HP here at this point. <laughs> Kinetic uh, EDS. 
No. Again, you have to get used to shooting because... Oh, I don't have more any more HP. Just have to... Be mobile here. See how quick, how quick HP goes down. Uh, better have some HP for me by the time I cross, dude. Uh, again, I forgot. This guy is actually hiding. Okay. Don't reload. I always forget the reload so as you can see guys it's not bad not really bad in you know carrying her max hp uh, it's all hp so this is the boss who is the boss okay See how quick. You have to be quick about it. You have to actually dodge and do another dodge. As you can see, how quick the HP goes down. You have to refill. Before you activate the standard skill again. Okay, then we go. See? How quick is that? <laughs> okay, guys. I think you've seen it all. And I haven't even, you know, I haven't even maxed her out. So let's go back to her stats for that damage output. I haven't really maxed out her neuronics. I haven't even maxed out her attack stat. So as you can see, neuronics, I still miss this one. Manifestation, obviously, I'm at zero. Logistics, although I maxed out, uh, but the final uh, stat line isn't freeze or or freeze damage or froze uh, or frost damage. Weapon, I still I only have one copy, so I am at what tier zero, tier one. So again, there's a lot of work to be done for her kit and. That is her damage output. Just want to show you guys the damage output because at first I was skeptical as well if she can deal that much damage and she can be effective. But I find her kit very fun to use. If you're looking for a different play style and if you're sick of using your existing characters, be my guest, pull for her. If you really want her character design or her looks, pull for her. Again, pull for her if you need her, if you desire to play with a different play style. I would highly recommend her. Her damage output is actually decent. It's not bad. It's actually above average. Um, and her kit has a lot of promise, I tell you. So pull just one copy, then mine for the rest of the copies. You don't really have to mine uh, a lot of copies for her. I don't think that is practical at this point. But... Again, guys, I'm recommending her. Pull for her, especially if you do. If you need, a, if you're not into a sniper, and if you are into burst weapons that can take down single bosses, because she's a single targets. She's a single target burst damage dealer. She's gonna be good at it, and she is going to be better as I improve her kit. So, thank you very much, guys, for staying this far. Take care, stay safe. This is the warden, and I'm out of here.